T-minus one minute. T minus 30 seconds. We are go for launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Welcome to the NASA Social for the Crew-1 mission to the International Space Station. Welcome to another segment of the NASA Virtual Social for the Crew-1 launch to the International Space Station. I'm your host, Wayne Saxer. Some of the most important things on launch day are weather and safety. It's one of the most common questions I get. Hey Wayne, how's the weather looking for launch? So we have very special guests from the 45th Space Wing lined up to answer all the questions you might have about that. Make sure you drop them in the chat window. I'm going to send it over to my colleague Tony at the observation gantry, standing by with those special guests to get those questions answered for you now. Hey guys, I'm Antonia Jaramillo and I am here at the Launch Complex 39A observation gantry with two very special guests from the 45th Space Wing Weather Squadron. I have Mike, McK Mike McAleon and Captain Matthew Walters with me. Can you guys tell me a little bit about what your role is at the Weather Squadron? Sure, uh, we're make sure that we don't launch through any kind of adverse uh, weather that could cause a problem for the vehicle or especially in this case, the crew. So with a crew launch, it's not just a local weather that we're worried about, but also up the ascent corridor on the Eastern seaboard of the United States. That's what Captain Walter is gonna make sure it's gonna be good. So yes, for, for crewed missions, we have a joint METOC officer team that we provide direct weather support to DET-3 and the contingency rescue mission all the way up through the ascent corridor as well as globally in the case of something doesn't go right. So very, very important roles, needless to say. Um, so we actually already have our first question from NASA Social. The first one is, is weather looking good for tomorrow's launch? Well, I'll talk about the local part. We're looking pretty good for tomorrow. We had a, a front kind of push through on the tail end of Tropical Storm Ada, and that's left a lot of moisture. But as you can see behind me, it's kind of clearing out, and so we're thinking that's going to continue. We do have a risk of some cumulus clouds as well as some showers that might come out of those clouds. And since this vehicle is returning, we need to make sure it doesn't fly through any precipitation that could damage the thermal tiles that uh, would allow that safe reentry. Up the East Corridor is also a little bit risky, but I'll let Captain Walter talk about so that. So right now we're looking good. Uh, Tropical Storm Ada has moved out and is weakening as it's moved out towards the Atlantic. So we're looking good through the Ascent Corridor. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it as we approach launch day, but looking good right now. Well, that's really good news because earlier this week it wasn't looking that great. Our next question, uh, what is the role of the 45th and weather team for launches? In other words, what do you guys do on launch day? Well, on launch day, it all comes together. I mean, I just want to bring up that we're involved in all the pieces and parts moving around, the practice countdowns, the payloads moving in and out. So that's where the real work is. On launch day, it's almost the fun part because everybody comes together to make sure this thing gets off safely or we wait another day. Um, so on launch day, for this launch, I'm going to be working in the radar position to make sure that we see where those echoes are of the cumulus clouds we're expecting are not close enough to cause any concern for liftoff. And I'll be the deputy JMO for this mission. 
backseating our primary JMO, Colonel Genegas, as well as the rest of our team, both down here and down at Patrick, uh, coordinating directly with the DET-3 team to make sure that the whole globe is good for launch. What exactly does JMO mean? So JMO is the Joint METOC Officer. So right now we're working with 14 different people around the world at units from Hawaii through Europe uh, just to make sure that we have timely and accurate weather information in the case of something not happening perfect. Understood. Our next question, did you guys always want to be a meteorologist growing up? Well, I'll tell you, I was always uh, loved science. I always was doing experiments and all the physical sciences, uh, but the Air Force told me I was gonna be a weather guy. So I'm really glad they picked that job for me because it's been very challenging and very interesting. And of course, I mean, you can't get excited about this and I don't know what job you wouldn't have a good time on. So I've always really wanted to be a meteorologist. I grew up on a small farm in rural Iowa and a tornado hit my farm when I was young. So that was kind of the defining moment for me. Uh, went to school, got my bachelor's in weather and uh, haven't looked back. Wow, that's quite a backstory. Uh, our next question, what's the most common weather concern for a launch? Well, for here, it is cumulus clouds. Um, we are the lightning capital of North America. We may be number four or five in the world, and it all happens within three or four month period from Tampa to Daytona, and we're right on the edge of that. So those cumulus clouds can pose a triggered lightning threat or a natural lightning threat if they grow tall enough become thunderstorms. So that's our number one risk. And even in almost winter time now, that's our concern. You know, that actually leads us up to our next question. Can a rocket launch while it's lightning? I mean, can it be struck by lightning and be okay? What happens? It, it can be okay. It's a risk. Apollo 12 was struck by lightning on liftoff. Um, it caused a lot of issues. They were able to go to the moon and back safely, but they weren't sure what was going to happen with the vehicle. Lightning is very uh, unpredictable in what kind of damage it has. Every lightning strike is not the same. Some are stronger. Some cause electromagnetic pulse damages. So there's all myriad of problems that can, that can occur. So we avoid lightning by 10 nautical miles to make sure it's safe for liftoff because we can actually trigger a lightning strike. The rocket can compress it electric field that's around us right now and can trigger its own strike. So we stay off even further than it is safe for humans to be around. So no lightning, basically. No lightning, you wouldn't wanna try it. <laughs> that sounds, sounds like a good plan. Um, we have another question. Is your team the one that calls a weather scrub? In other words, can you guys basically say no go to a launch? Well, uh, I'd like to put it this way. We make sure we don't launch unless it's safe. So that might result in a scrub, but that's not the kind of way we want to look at it. We kind of go into a countdown that everything is not safe until we can clear all of our 10 or 11 rules to make sure we can launch safely. So yes, we make the go, no go call, but it's not that we're looking for a scrub. We want to make sure the launch goes off safely. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Um, we have our last question. I think one of the most important ones, where will you guys be on launch day? Well, I'll be just across the river on the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, uh, working the radar booth to make sure I pass uh, the good information to our launch weather officer, Arlena Moses, for this launch. And we will we will uh, make sure that we don't launch with those cumulus clouds are too close. Captain Walter? I'll be at the same place. Uh, we'll be doing a slightly different mission, talking to DET-3 and the contingency piece. Uh, similar forecast, just making sure everything goes off without a hitch. Well, happy launch, you guys. I really hope it lifts off. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure having you. you. Now, before we move on to our next guest, we're going to show you a quick promo video for the Crew-1 mission scheduled to lift off at 7.49 p.m. tomorrow. We are super excited. We hope you guys are, too. Now, without further ado, here's that video. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. America has Counting down the days until crew one. 
That'll be the first operational flight in a Crew Dragon spacecraft. Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Shannon Walker, and JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi are to be the first multinational crew to fly in this new capable vehicle. This mission marks the return of a full crew complement to the International Space Station, and together they will celebrate the 20th anniversary of continuous human efforts on board the station. Hey, you guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video. Now I have another very special guest with me, Lieutenant Colonel David Mahan from the Debt 3. David, can you tell me a little bit about what exactly is Debt 3? Yes, Tony. So Detachment 3, 45th Operations Group, is the Human Space Flight Support Office. So best way to think about it is any type of DOD support to NASA for manned space flight uh, would run through our office. Wow. So kind of an important job, needless to say. We already have our first question from NASA Social. They want to know, how do you train for a human rescue mission? So that that's a very big question on a global scale. So uh, I guess the best way to think about it is that we prep for a mission. Uh, Guardian Angel Rescue Forces are going to be brought into town. They're going to go through uh, training, everything from uh, using the equipment to getting to the capsule, uh, to extricating the astronauts from the capsule, and then everything in between uh, okay. for the rescue side of it. Nice. And what advice do you have for someone who wants your job? Okay, so uh, our unit is compiled of a bunch of different uh, for survival specialists, guardian angel rescue forces. Uh, I'm a C-17 pilot. We have uh, HC-130 and HH-60 pilots, so it's a very broad career field, but it's not something you do right out the gate. So you just become a specialist in something, and then eventually you could find your way here uh, doing this. Did you ever think you'd be doing this? So ironically, I grew up in Titusville. I went to THS and UCF, so I watched all the shuttle missions, um, nine assignments later, and I I wanted to come back here it was always a dream and it ended up working out nice how many people are on your team so day to day we have about 35 people that support all three nasa programs uh, and then once we actually stand up task force 45 for the execution of the rescue mission we've actually got uh, over 100 people just here and then approximately 20 at charleston in south carolina and then also 20 in hickam in hawaii supporting the mission very big team, <laughs> needless to say. Uh, so where exactly will you be on launch day? What will be your role? So my role on launch day is I'll be in our support operations center up at Patrick and I'll be the uh, the SOC director. So just the, the hub of all of the information coming in and that if there is an emergency, uh, we would execute from the operations center from there. Right, so basically this is the job where, you know, you have to train and prepare for it, but you don't want to actually have to go out there. We don't want an emergency to Absolutely. happen. Absolutely, we're the insurance policy, but our goal is that we stand up on alert, we train the forces, we're ready to support, uh, and then we don't do anything. And then we stand down and go home. Got you, insurance policy, I Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Uh, do you train with the astronauts? So there are times during some of our, our developmental events that the crew will come down uh, and we'll do uh, events to where we help them uh, assist the egress out of the capsule. Uh, we work closely with NASA and the crew office uh, to do our developmental and our training events. Got you, and so what are you most excited then about this specific launch? Just honestly, being a part of this mission, being a part of history, I know the whole team uh, is super excited to be a part of uh, the next mission for, for SpaceX and for NASA and just to be ready to support. And so then did you do the same thing for Demo 2 when we sent two astronauts to the um, International Space Station last May? Absolutely. The team stood up. We had all the forces on alert at all the different locations. Uh, and We were on call, ready to go, uh, and people rotate through the positions uh, for that particular mission. Wow. So I guess, what's your favorite part of the whole process? You know, it's NASA is one of those things you grew up watching it as a kid and all the science and the technology and working with all the professional people. I'd say it's the people. Uh, you get to interact with a lot of professionals, rescue forces, uh, all the people at the debt that we get to work with and across the globe. And we've got rescue forces from the 38th, the 58th, uh, C-17 folks from uh, Hickam, from the Guard. Um, and they're just all sorts of different locations that we get to work with. So the people is the most interesting part. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. At least everyone else watching this, they'll know you like working with everyone. <laughs> um, I guess, is there anything, you know, you wish you could also do um, or are you kind of already doing your dream job right now? 
So I've been lucky enough to, to do several different things, both from flying and then uh, from the nuclear weapons career field. Uh, but I always wanted to be my, my, when I joined the Air Force, I wanted to go into the space career field and I had to do a couple of different things before that. And so it's really amazing to get to be back to be a part of this. Did you ever think you'd be an astronaut? Did you ever want that? You know, that was definitely something that, uh, that I, uh, that I was interested in, but I will tell you reading the resumes of most of those people, it was, uh, yeah, there's a lot of competition. <laughs> Aw, so I guess then if you got that opportunity, if NASA came knocking on your door and was like, hey, David, we want to take you up on the rocket, you've got to go to space next, would you say yes? Without even a hesitation. Oh, really? Where <laughs> would you first go? Where would I go? Yeah, if you could, like anywhere in space. Oh, wow, as far as possible. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if I could go as far as possible. That sounds very cool. As long as I got to come back, my wife's watching. She wouldn't be happy if I, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, that's my one condition too. I don't want to like live anywhere else but Earth, but I do want to travel. Right. That would be amazing. Uh, we have a question from hashtag Ask NASA. What part of this mission has the most meaning for you personally, historically? Just all around. Uh, I would say uh, the rescue aspect of it. Um, I mean, historically, uh, uh, space launch is dangerous and things do go wrong. So just getting to be a part of the hoping to help if something actually goes wrong and being able to be there and ho hoping to make a, a bad day not so bad. Absolutely. I mean, like you said, you guys are the insurance policy. You are kind of the safety on the ground. Um, probably not the right words, but um, basically, that's amazing. That's honestly a very, very challenging and I think crucial role. Uh, do you have any last remarks before we close out? No, the only thing I can say is Detachment 3, Task Force 45, and all the forces that are supporting are extremely professional and we're very honored to be a part of the mission. Well, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much for joining us. It was great having you, David. And uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Back to you. Thanks for getting all of those questions answered for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm really excited to hear about how all these safety measures are helping to keep our astronauts safe because our next show at two o'clock have two of my favorite astronauts and we are going to have the same opportunity for you to ask those questions again. So please join us at two o'clock for our next show as we prepare to once again launch America.